What is up, YouTube? It is your man, Bob the Tiki Man, coming to you from beautiful, and I do mean beautiful, because I know I say beautiful in every vlog, but I mean simply DDG, which means drop dead gorgeous, Crystal River, Florida. I uh, started out today from a uh, small little launching area called Hunter Springs. And uh, just a little forewarning, if you're going to come here, have a kayak or paddleboard, this is definitely the best place to launch off from. But be careful, parking uh, fills up really fast, and also they only accept credit card. So uh, no cash at all. So you have been warned. Nice to be out here, uh, beautiful weather, and uh, crystal clear water as it looks like today. Um, today, I'm going to be discussing with you guys uh, conservation, um, you know, environmentalism. Uh, we're going to touch on some of the activists that are heavily involved, some of my favorite anyway. And uh, just to forewarn you, uh, you know, some of my facts um, come out maybe as opinionated, but um, I'm going to try to keep the facts as facts because this in its own self is quite a uh, touchy subject but uh, to get underway I will start by saying that uh, my logo has actually changed yes I have a brand new official logo I know I'm gonna miss uh, Mr. Tiki Head too but uh, he has served his purpose and he has served very well uh, alongside me for a while now but it's for the best, you know. We uh, we sure did share some, you know, some good memories. Remember that time we were at the beach and we almost uh, hit those people? Or remember that baby alligator that I was scared and freaked out about, but you saved me. You saved me, Mr. Tiki Head. I don't know what I'm gonna do about those times. I'm getting so emotional. Got a new bracelet. I love this bracelet. It's uh. As you know, it is May. It is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. And what this band does is that uh, it tells me out in the sun, out in the UV rays, it turns blue to let me know, hey, you're in UV light. You may get melanoma. So be wary, be cautious, watch out for skin cancer, make sure you use that sunscreen. So to get our vlog started off with conservation, I'm gonna try and keep you guys out of the sun. Actually. I have a pretty good idea of an area I can go to where there is no more sun. Hold on just a second. Okay, so um, to go ahead and get our vlog underway, uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, conservation. Some people that, in my opinion, uh, make a good name for themselves uh, inside with it. And um, the first person that I like to talk about whenever I get on the subject of conservation is a uh, man by the name of Rick O'Berry. Now, Rick O'Berry, if you don't know who that is, uh, he was the head trainer for the dolphins of the hit TV show and movies of uh, Flipper. And if you don't know what Flipper is, I don't know what to tell you, but YouTube it, Google it, you're missing out. So not only was he the head trainer of the dolphins, but he also aided in the illegal capturing of them. Uh, there were five dolphins used for the show, and uh, Rick O'Berry was one of the ones that like I said, illegally captured them, uh, started to train them, became really close to them, uh, especially with a particular dolphin who was used most of the times as the main character. Uh, her name in real life was Kathy, uh, Kathy the dolphin. And uh, Rick um, got, you know, very close uh, to Kathy. Um, Relationship-wise as a friend, because they you know, really just bonded after the years and years of the work that they did. And uh, 
he uh you know he loved kathy to death but um kathy was kept in a very small uh all the dolphins actually were kept in very very small uh containment units unless of course when they were filming the show then they would let them out rick oberry claims in an interview is that kathy the dolphin uh, actually committed suicide i know that sounds weird you know how can a dolphin actually commit suicide but you have to understand unlike humans like me and you when a dolphin breathes it's a conscious matter like you and me when we breathe it's an automatic thing we don't we don't think about it but for dolphins every breath they take is inhale exhale they have to think about it so when a dolphin is stressed out in enclosed quarters they're stressed out to the point where hey i don't want to take the next breath they have the ability to do that and in this case unfortunately it happened to kathy and uh rick oberry after that point in time was pretty distraught he uh you know he lost not only you know the dolphin that he helped train but also a friend that he had as well so after Rick O'Berry lost Kathy after most of his you know career was over he could easily have retired um you know just kept the money kept doing uh you know what he wanted to do fun times in life you know cars women yada 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 but instead what he's still doing today which is uh being extremely active in uh conservation Rick O'Berry was also featured in a documentary which uh, I don't know if you've seen it's called The Cove uh, it's about a place in Japan, in uh, Taiji, where they basically group up dolphins for slaughter, slaughter them, and then sell their meat on the open market. Also, if you didn't know, uh, dolphins' meat is uh, heavily laced with mercury, which is uh, basically slowly eating poison. And um, it's just it's just not good for the body. The Japanese like to you make up their own tests, say, oh, this isn't true, but it very muchly so is true. So he was featured in the documentary because of his story on the conservation that he does, particularly for dolphins themselves. And that's the cool thing about Rick, you know, it's um it's the fact that he didn't have to have an organization or society to uh to get started. Um, basically, you know, he's gotten in trouble for cutting uh, illegal fishing nets, but it's definitely been worth it for him. Like he said, you know, he's happy with what he does, um, with what he's been doing. And it's a good example to follow, you know, uh, we don't need to join an organization or society to start, um, you know, any conservation that we want to do. Another topic I want to touch on though, too, as well, different organizations and groups particularly what started early on uh, is a group known as Greenpeace. Greenpeace, the interesting thing is, is that nobody's seen a conservation group, the scale or size that Greenpeace came to as fast as they did. Greenpeace uh, has done a lot for conservation. Um, they've, uh, you know, they've protested uh, a lot of the slaughters, a lot of the hunting, um, but in a sense, that's mostly what they do is uh, campaign wise, you know, holding signs and signing, hey, you know, what you're doing is wrong. Now comes Paul Watson, which was one of the founding members of Greenpeace, who said, hey, you know, maybe we should do a little bit more, you know, be more active. Greenpeace didn't like that. Um, they called him a radical and basically shoved him out uh, off the board and then he cut ties with them uh, soon later. So the interesting thing about Paul Watson though, is that without skipping a beat, he then founded uh, Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. And he was like, hey, you know, it's time to roll up the sleeves. Um, you know, instead of saying what you're doing is wrong, it's terrible, it's horrible. He's actually, you know, trying to put a, you know, a stop to it. The best thing that we can learn from uh, Paul Watson and his story is that, uh, you know, if we say enough's enough, you know, we're, we're not, you know, wanting to just hold up signs. We too can actually get active, actually do things about it. Uh, but uh, a lot of people would say that uh, Paul Watson was, uh, you know, was reckless. He only cares about himself. Uh, what else? He's dangerous. Uh, he's an eco-terrorist. I'm neither for nor against that. 
I'm just stating the facts in a chronological order of another organization that was derived from Greenpeace that get a lot more involved. Also, having said that, a lot of people don't really like Steve Irwin, and I'm not exactly sure as to why. Uh, a lot of people say he's disturbed animals, he's wrecked ecosystems, and he somehow single-handedly cut down half of the Amazon rainforest. Me personally, I like Steve Irwin. I like uh, the conservation uh, that he's led us to, uh, the societies that he's led us to, and also to uh, the protection that he's come to aid uh, for animals with his own money. So we paddled all this way out in the Kings Bay for just a couple of boats, but that's okay because I'm kind of like a boat fanatic. Think about it. What's the most expensive car in the world? Now Google the most expensive boat in the world and it's even got with the maintenance the most expensive private jet in the world too. Boats are just awesome. I love them. Another word on Sea Shepherd, uh, not Captain Paul Watson, but uh, Sea Shepherd actually does the things that they say they are going to do and I had the privilege of working alongside them in collaboration with them and also STOP which uh, stands for Sea Turtle Oversight Protection. I had the honor of serving with both them and Sea Shepherd in Fort Lauderdale for Operation Hyro which essentially was to guard and protect the sea turtle eggs on the beaches uh, from poachers, hunters, anybody that wanted to endanger them. So we covered a pretty good area, you know, made our presence known. Sorry, I'm getting really tired. This is a pretty good workout today. And uh, the mission was counted as a success because as far as we were concerned, no poachers came in our vicinity. No hunters were in our vicinity as well either. These scenes at the dock and the boats it always reminds me of that movie Jaws. I love that movie. It's like one of my favorite movies. I'll watch the movie Jaws and then I'll go paddle out in the ocean. I don't care. So it's uh, it's been an exciting adventure out here in Crystal River. Uh, it was, uh, you know, nice scenery. Uh, nice paddling, nice exercise too. So uh, I highly recommend that you definitely come out here. Uh, beautiful people. Uh, they are awesome. Uh, as friendly as can be. Um, didn't catch any manatees, not much wildlife today, but uh, you can definitely expect to see a lot in uh, Crystal River if you come out to visit. So I highly recommend it. Um, if you'd like to drop a like, uh, drop a subscription uh, if you'd like to keep up with my videos. Uh, this kind of wraps up my conservation. Um, been wanting to do this for a little while and I'm always nervous on camera. I'm never myself, but I'm hoping that's going to go away with time. Um, as I get, you know, more comfortable with YouTube and, you know, how to do things. And I like to see my channel progress as usual, um, especially with my new logo, like I said, um, new website design. So uh, a lot of things are just uh, moving, moving right along. So that's good. Well, it has been fun out here in Crystal River. I uh, had a good time, good exercise too. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to take a dip into this crystal clear beautiful water it rained yesterday still it's gonna feel so good crystal clear it's like 70 degrees um, like I always say in every vlog though uh, may your nights always be red may the fortune always favor the bold it's Bob the Tiki man I'm out